So you can see we coiled around a couple times and I'm right where I left off. So this was my first double stitch. And at this point, I'm gonna change the pitch of the stitch. So we've been poking through the top and feeding it through the other side of the stitch and pulling tight. If I keep repeating that pattern, I'm gonna have more of a vertical shape basket or a very similar shape to a cylinder. But I like more of a bowl shape or a barrel shape like you see here. So I'm gonna lower that angle. And this is really a matter of personal preference. If you want a cylinder shape or the vertical shape basket, just keep on doing the same thing all the way around until you're ready to finish. But I want, again, that bowl shape. So I feed the string around, or the thread around, and I poke through towards the bottom instead of the top. So I'm finding the bottom of that stitch where that V meets. I'm going to poke through, catch it on the other side, and tighten up. I'm getting really close to changing my string, so I want to show you how to do that here in a bit with this double stitch. It's very similar to how we changed it out before. And then feed it around, again, catching that same hole. Push it through and pull tight. So you can see it's starting to push that coil out instead of up. One other thing to keep in mind is when you make a large base, if you want a big basket, a very large base basket, you want to start that double stitch before you start coiling up. That's important, otherwise needles are gonna start popping out again. So once more, I'm going to add a couple needles, maybe three or four bundles here. Feeding each needle right in the center of the basket, or right in the center of the bundle. So we throw it over, and this is the last stitch I'm going to do before I change my thread. Right at the bottom, where you see that little V here, you want to poke at the base of that. Catch that stitch on the other side. And pull tight. One thing you don't want to do with this thread is wait until it's small and frayed out. Because when it's frayed out, you have more weak spots and that'll break as you're pulling your coil tight. Then you have to unwrap everything. When you unwrap things, needles start to break. I learned the hard way <laughs> a couple years ago. All right. So I wanna show you how to change this thread. I'll go ahead and unravel two strands, two arms length, and I'll be right back. Now to change this thread, it's the same thing as before. I just go through that same hole that I ended up with. I catch a stitch on the other side and I pull that thread through, leaving a tag end. So about this much is good. And then I'll throw it over the bundle and I'll continue on my double stitch pattern four more times. So I poke through the bottom of that coil.
catch the stitch. And pull the thread tight. When you get a lot of these tips on your needles poking out, you just got to kind of adjust your thread accordingly. I have a needle here that's sticking out, so we'll remove that. So again, through that same hole. And pull your thread through. So there's one stitch. I'll do that three more times and I'll be right back with you. And you can see we have all four stitches, one up here, two, three, and four. So again, we take the needle off the fresh thread, we grab one of the tag ends, and we wanna count two coils down. Poke that through. and catch it on the other side to pull tight. And I just kind of snug it a bit. And then trim that without cutting the stitch. And same thing with this other tag. This one's a bit frayed, so you can see that this right in here, it's pretty weak. So I'm gonna cut this right about here. If you're putting frayed stitches through your basket, that's gonna become very dangerous later on it'll gradually get weaker and weaker and as much tension as these stitches are holding it can break so again one two coils I'm gonna go three on this one and I just catch that stitch on the other side and poke through Uh, that's kind of sloppy. We're going to have to put this in a different location. Just the way that this basket is angled. All right, that is definitely frayed, so... Probably time for a scissor replacement on that Swiss tool as well. That's better. All right. Well, let's take a look at this basket. Yeah, I'll go right down here. Let's see what this does. much better we caught that on the other side 
again snug that tight and clip the thread. About three and a half years ago, I asked my instructor, what happens if I miss an entire stitch and I just go on to the other one without paying attention or realizing it? And her answer was unthread everything until you can go back and catch that stitch. And that's important because if you do miss a stitch at this stage, it sacrifices the integrity and structure of the basket, but it also creates a major weak spot in your basket. So it's important to just go slow Make sure you're catching every single stitch so your basket is a quality product. And what I'll do now is I'll just keep coiling around until this basket is just about complete. Just repeating the same pattern until I get this thing built up.